Hi, my name is Jen, and I'm the co-owner of the Formidable Genealogist Research Company, here today with a dose of Formidable Genealogy. Today, I'm going to talk about single women homesteaders, how common it was and what they endured. I'm going to use an example from my own family. Let me share my screen. I first became interested in the topic when I came across this photo of my great grandfather's sisters by a rustic home on a desolate prairie. It kind of looked like a staged photo that you often see with a jackalope or a trio of men wrangling a 10 foot grasshopper. I thought that surely these young ladies wouldn't have homesteaded on their own. But then I found the same image as a postcard in a relative's collection. It was dated June 10th, 1907 from Stern, South Dakota. My dear father, we received the checks Friday. Many thanks for same. We are all well, hope you are the same. We will soon be home now. Best wishes to all from your Louise. I was intrigued and knew I needed to look into it further. Louise and Hilda were born in the early 1880s, only one year and five months apart in age. To Norwegian immigrants, Jacob and Ingeborg Jensen, who came to America in 1869 to homestead in Hudson, Dakota Territory near Sioux Falls. Another photo showed a definite sense of humor and some improvements to the place, particularly a new sod exterior. The back says Hilda's claim shanty, claim jumpers beware. I decided to see if I could track down more information about their time homesteading. So I went out to the Bureau of Land Management Record Search page. If you're not familiar with how to use this database, please see my previous video on finding a farm or homestead location. I spend time in that video walking you through the features on that site and how to apply them to your research. The BLM site shows me that they took out their patents on September 3, 1907. It also shows me the location of their 160 acres just north of I-90 near the South Dakota Badlands in 1880 town, for anyone familiar with that location. From this page, I can see that Hilda had the Northeast quarter and Louise the Southeast quarter. These young ladies were in a very barren area, 269 miles from home. These other photos are ones that Hilda took of her neighbor's claim shanty. Though the girls didn't live there full time, they made frequent trips to check on their claim and were able to travel there by train. Their brother Gerhard also ended up getting a claim near them at one point. Louise married in 1909 and Hilda became a nurse in World War I. The next reference I have to their claim is a letter that Hilda writes to her brother in 1919. She writes a four page letter all about the goings on when she visits her claim and names at least a dozen neighbors by name. She clearly spent extensive time there. Her letter sounds like it was still a tough area to live in in 1919, full of harsh weather and rattlesnakes. She had several offers to buy her quarter for $20 from neighbors while she was there, but was not ready to sell. Her letter shows that she had great pride in being a landowner. I'm a member of a few South Dakota history groups on Facebook, as so much of my family comes from there. I posted some of these photos of Hilda and Louise in order to learn more from the group about other homesteading single women. One woman commented and told me she had a painting of that same photo that I posted. I was dubious as I assumed I would know if something like that existed, being the family expert I purport to be. The woman then posted a photo of this painting along with the write-up of the artist. It was painted by Louise's granddaughter, Phyllis Jorgensen, and is called Proving Up. On the back of the painting, there's a great write-up by Phyllis. Proving up was the term for homesteaders who spent several months to five years living on the land to prove their desire to work the land. The artist's grandmother Louise and her siblings Hilda and Gerhard Jensen moved to Jackson County near Stamford, South Dakota in September 1907 to prove up. Each barely in their 20s, they filed on adjoining land so as to increase their acreage. Louise later told her family about rigging her mattress up on hinges so that she could hang it on the wall to get some floor space in her tiny home. She described the adventure of shooting rattlesnakes and skinning them to send back east to Canton, South Dakota and Inwood, Iowa. She and her sister washed clothes for the railroad crews as they worked their way through the area. They hauled their water from a pond. In an attempt to keep warm in the winter, they would insulate their homes with sod bricks. The picture of these women homesteading was inspired by a glass negative found amidst Louise's belongings. 
This captured moment in time speaks to us of the courage, tenacity, endurance, creativity, and faith of the pioneers as they pursued their love of freedom in the incredible vastness of the great prairie grasslands. Phyllis is 90 and living in South Dakota, and I intend to write her a letter today to see if I can learn more of Hilda and Louise's time on the prairie. Finding something like this is why I'm a big advocate for casting a wide net in your research and throwing ideas out into the ether to see what the universe throws back to you through history and genealogy Facebook groups, contacting distant relatives and area historical societies. I've had so many amazing finds and helpful people in my own family research and try to do the same for others. You never know where you might unearth more information about your family and context for their lives. With the Homestead Act of 1862, single women of at least 21 years of age were now given the opportunity to own 160 acres of federal land in their own name. Women who were married were not allowed land in their own name unless they were considered the head of their household. So it was predominantly women who were widowed, single, divorced, or abandoned. Some estimates I've seen are that historians state that around 12% of homesteaders on the Great Plains were young, single women in their 20s. This photo is from the Nebraska State Historical Society and shows the Chrisman sisters on their claim in Custer County, Nebraska in 1886. Each of the sisters eventually filed their own homesteads. It meant that they needed to remain unmarried for at least five years, but they were intent on proving up their land and being landowners. The sisters took turns living with each other in their small homes in order to fulfill the residents requirements, but not have to live completely alone in such harsh conditions. The South Dakota State University website has a whole page devoted to women homesteaders, which lists various resources specific to South Dakota. I've included the link in the video description. There's a link to a great article on there that is a personal account of one woman from Iowa and her experience on the plains of South Dakota near Pierre. I encourage you to seek out more information about these often overlooked and hardy women and see if there are any single female homesteaders in your family trees. The Formidable Genealogist is a small family history research company consisting of two passionate and tenacious genealogists in the Midwest. In addition to research, we can also help people find their biological family through DNA, scan and digitally repair photos, slides, negatives, and documents, and create personalized family tree artwork based off of 30 or more templates on our website. Happy searching.